But what the world had forgotten was the extraordinary Budweiser rocket. It was the creation of Hollywood film director Hal Needham. The idea was it was a frontier that hadn't been climbed. And I just thought it'd be nice to be part of history. In 1979, the US Air Force confirmed that the Budweiser rocket had broken the sound barrier. But because the team didn't run under FIA rules, their achievement was never officially recognized. This film hasn't been shown for two decades. Five, four, three, two, one. The car was driven by a Hollywood stuntman, Stan Barrett. You can ignore or reject the facts, but that does not change the fact that I went Mach 1, and I'm the first man to do that. FIA rules were first formulated in 1914. They state that a car must run twice in opposite directions over a measured mile, or just over a kilometer and a half within one hour. The record speed is an average of the two runs, and the car must have a minimum of four wheels. But the Budweiser rocket had three wheels. For Hal Needham, rules like this were irrelevant. I didn't see any sense in having to run two ways. What, what does that prove? Because you did it going that way, and now you did it going that way. They simply wanted to use the power of their car to reach Mark 1. When you touch the button on that thing, it was at full power, instantaneous. As you're accelerating, the thing feels like it's going to break in a thousand pieces. I mean, it's incredible. You think it's going to explode any second. During his early runs at Bonneville Salt Flats, Utah, Stan Barrett reached 1,026 kilometers an hour, the fastest anyone had ever driven. For Hal Needham and Stan Barrett, it was a triumph, but there was still another 160 kilometers per hour to go to reach the sound barrier. I thought how fast it was to have gone as fast as we had, and I went, why, this is not gonna be an easy task. To prepare himself for the increase in G's he would experience at such high speeds, Stan put himself through a rigorous training regime. During the run, the wheels broke through the surface of the salt flat. So for their supersonic attempts, they relocated to Edwards Air Force Base. Here they switched to a new rocket engine to give them the enormous thrust required. Three, two, one, ignition. In his first run at Edwards, Stan accelerated to 800 kilometers per hour in just 10 seconds. The power of the car was staggering, but was it enough to reach supersonic speed? As we started getting up around that 700 mile an hour mark, it didn't take us long to realize we didn't have enough power. So we went to the Navy and bought six Sidewinder missiles without the warheads, of course. One Sidewinder missile gave them the additional thrust but at an increased risk. I, I didn't really like the idea of being coupled with that sidewinder. It was mounted right behind my head for one thing, and I was not real convinced that whatever brackets they had holding it were gonna keep it in place, and I was kind of afraid when I fired it I'd lose my mind. The other thing about the sidewinder was when you turn it on, you can't turn it off. So you're really committed. with the Sidewinder missile, the car shot straight to 800 kilometers per hour in only 10 seconds. The extreme G-forces ruptured a disc in Stan's neck. I don't know, I was so surprised that it hit me so hard. Uh, yeah, you're breaking up on that radio. You get a lot of acceleration, period, when you hit that thing in there. I thought, gee whiz, you know, if this is the kind of acceleration I get, what is, what's going to happen when you couple this with the hybrid engine? Uh, you know, I didn't know whether I could take it or not. Rather than use conventional land speed record timing devices, they recruited the help of the Air Force. The wing commander at Edwards was the fastest man in the air, having flown at over six times the speed of sound. 
we had our people uh, looking at every part of the operation to provide any professional advice that we could uh, based on our experience. We did timing on every run with our radar on the base, the same kind of radar that we use in determining speeds and altitudes of aircraft with our instrumentation here on the flight test center. The next challenge was to test the car at maximum power. It was a tense moment for Stan's wife and family. Traveling at 300 meters every second, his speed peaked at 1148 kilometers per hour. Almost, but not quite, the speed of sound. The entire run took less than a minute, and Stan suffered no injury. The next morning, it was cold, minus six degrees Celsius. To break Mark 1, Stan would need to reach 1176 kilometers per hour. My major concern was Stan Barrett. Damn the sound barrier or anything else. Stan and I have been friends for years and years, and obviously I didn't want to kill him. I feel if you're booked to burn, you're not going to drown, so I just uh, went ahead with what I decided to do and saw it through. Stan, would you pray for us, please? If something went wrong, we'd have had to come out here with a bunch of sponges and tried to find Stan Barrett. There wouldn't have been anything left of him, the car, or anything else at that kind of speed. Two and a half kilometers into the run, he fired the sidewinder. Once I hit it, I was really surprised again at the extra acceleration I got. I pulled another G at 640 miles an hour. And a few seconds later, I felt some pretty sharp buffeting, and uh, then it smoothed out, and then it was like hitting a wall when the engines quit. The deceleration was pretty dramatic. Speed. We ran out of fuel between two and four hundred feet. Stan had broken the sound barrier. As he'd approached Mark 1, his two back wheels left the ground. He'd gone supersonic and come dangerously close to death. I think it was a fantastic achievement. I think it was outstanding. Just a, something that uh, will go down in the history books as one of those significant events that happened in the history of speed. We did certify it. The car did go supersonic. And in fact, I sent Hal Needham a message uh, to that effect. And it was from the Air Force and certified by the Air Force. Despite Air Force measurements, Stan Barrett's achievement was never included in the record books. His car had only three wheels and only ran in one direction. The official FIA record couldn't be claimed.